Monday, Friday. We'll be here soon, but this is the 4th of July. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Da -da 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 Ba, ba, ba. I, also, I should be an opera. Uh, the Fitzgerald, you know all the, the ritual, probably uh, know it better than I do. What did I want to tell you, Zoe? So, oh, yesterday we were talking about uh, True Grit, a motion picture. First, a very fine novel. We talked about it six or eight months ago. And here is Judith Christ, perhaps what my favorite film reviewer in this whole wide world. She appears every week in a magazine called New York, not to be confused with the New Yorker. And by golly, if she hasn't done a, listen to this, True Grit comes through as total refreshment for those yearning for wholesome fun beyond the bedroom, brothel, or battlefield. Now there, there, that girl has got it, and it shows that there's money in, in and other things besides filth. I tell you, it's wonderful. I haven't read it yet, just the headline. And then you find another glowing review in the holiday, didn't you, Peggy? Yes, that was Rex yeah. Reed. So mm -hmm. there we are with John Wayne, who, who I never thought could act enough to, gee was to come in out of the rain. But apparently he, he, he's been undercover for 40 years, and all of a sudden he has developed into a fine actor. Mm -hmm. Well, if he should keep on playing that part that he plays in True Grit, Rex Reese says he would be doing the world a service. That this is the would. one part that's tailor-made for his uh, talent, or I think he inferred his lack thereof. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, there are certain uh, people who, uh, without artifice, can play certain parts. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's now, for example, in other words, they're typed. They're if, someone, to that if someone were playing your life story, whom would you who would you nominate? Me. No. <laughs> well, suppose you couldn't play it. Who would you who well, would you suppose have I was six feet under, I wouldn't care who played it. Then they could put Sonny Tufts in it for all of me. Well, Adolf Manjou wouldn't be a good choice because no. uh, you'd look just as good playing yourself I, I, as he'd not look. By the widest stretch of the imagination can I conceive any motion picture people of ever wanting to make the story of my life. Oh, if they knew the whole story, they would. The hypothetical question is therefore answered, I hope, satisfactorily. Are you going to forbid anybody to make oh, a movie? Oh, no, <laughs> forever. When I'm six feet under, you could use a few bucks, maybe. Oh, no, I would <laughs> like to see them do the story of my life. And uh, by then, the statute of limitation, me being six feet, you really would make a good tale, wouldn't it? It would. Yes, sir. Gene Shepard did a program night before last on early aviation that was so, I was sorry you were asleep already. I wish you could have heard it because this is the type of thing that you and Gene share ideas about. And he was talking, among others, of Wrongway Corrigan. You know, he'd gotten down to that date. I had forgotten about Wrongway Corrigan. And Gene described him as aviation's truly modest man. And he has a copy of a biography written by, and not ghostwritten, written by Wrongway Corrigan. And he read some of the opening well, statements. How do you do? Read it from back to front? Or? How do you mean? This biography. Why would you read it from back to front? Did I miss something? Well, he's there? Wrongway Corrigan. I oh. have to explain jokes to you. Yes, You're you as do. bad as Mark Anton. <laughs> but the publisher of this book by Rongway Corrigan had a disclaimer in it that a word had been touched. Apparently he wouldn't. And it was just as if a modest man were talking. Well, he was and a garage mechanic, wasn't he, in his private life? I don't know, but apparently the fact that this plane would even cross the Atlantic under any circumstance was almost miraculous. <laughs> uh, the plane was uh, older and uh, not in condition as was the spirit of St. Louis. And he and wasn't nearly, as I understand it, as good a, as good a pilot as Lindbergh. Well, he m perhaps was not thought before the flight to have been as good a pilot as Lindbergh, but with more hazards than Lindbergh had, apparently he made it. Not that either of them had much help except, you know, from their own dauntless uh, courage and, and uh, but um, uh, modest as Lindbergh was, 
uh, Gene Shepard said Runway Corrigan made Lindlard look like a boaster. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's stretching it. Uh, Lindbergh, uh, uh, I think, was the, or the, the great. Well, Gene didn't say Lindbergh wasn't modest, but he said this man was modest to the point of almost uh, uh, crawling into a hole. And he said, where is the Runway Corrigan now? Who, who knows where he is? And he said, how many men have gotten by name into history as a generic, uh, you know, a generic Wrong way fact? Corrigan, yes. Wrong way Corrigan. Well, of course, he knew very well. He was a brave man. He knew very well that he, he wasn't uh, flying the wrong way. He wanted to cross the Atlantic, of and course. the authorities mm -hmm. said no. But he so was he smart. he said, all right, he was going to the Pacific coast, and then he took off and, and went across. Yes. He was a very brave man. Yes, well, are you brave? Yes, um, yes, I, I'm brave, I'm valiant, I'm courageous, I am determined, but not foolhardy. I thought you were going to say, but not very. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps that would be another way of putting it, eh? I think you're brave, I mm -hmm. think you're brave. Show me the mouse that I'm afraid of anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. I loved a little squib I saw the other day someplace. A Playboy Club publication had a little item boasting that Procter & Gamble, Union Carbide, IBM, and Eastman Kodak are among the many blue chip companies that are holding their business meetings at its facilities. Among the attractions, says Playboy, are bunnies tending to your every need. Well. How do you like that? How do you like that or that grab? How you? do you like that? Gee, fuck. And another odd item that came to my attention was that cigarette filters are going so exotic, according to some of the patents issued, Aye. that some of the devices made for filters are made of animal bones, some are made of honey, clay, sugar, gauze, and linen, and moss. Now, the one who has an invention on a moss, you know, moss that grows on stones. On the north side of things. <laughs> Uh, the, the person who has a patent on moss to be used as a cigarette filter uh, says that the um, uh, mouthpiece to go with the filter has to be made of residues of moss plants grown in a bog area. And another filter for cigarettes contains progressive amounts of tissue paper and bitter powder to discourage the smokers. In other words, in a pack of cigarettes, they're numbered, and you start smoking one, two, three, four, and the stuff gets progressively bitter and, <laughs> and it and discourages you, you more and more. They you expect smoke. some cigarette manufacturer to buy this pack? Well, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Who would ever buy a second pack of that? They'd have to, not to depend on on uh, uh, follow-up sales. Cigarettes. Somebody who w wanted to put cigarettes out of business, I guess. Wait till the Daily News gives a, an editorial on this. You know, the Daily News claims that nobody's ever proved that a cigarette hurt anybody and uh, points to uh, the long-lived Indians who were smoking, uh, Indians who raised the tobacco plants in the first place. I never heard of all Indians being so long lived. I don't think they died of cigarettes necessarily, but there were tomahawks and arrows and, and uh, charges by the U.S. cavalry. Yes, the cavalry was not noted for keeping Indians alive on into middle age. And uh, of course, Custer was about the only one that uh, uh, fell. Uh, Custer in the was the only one way. of high rank. There were only a great many fell. Rank. Poor devils came out, out of Ireland and went in the army for seven dollars a month. Well, it was sad. Uh, the whole situation, Indians versus the, uh, the versus the settlers. But um, I wonder um, when the Indians introduced tobacco to who was it, Sir Walter Raleigh? And he took it uh, over well, to yeah. England. Uh, one uh -huh. of the Indians who introduced Certainly. it? it was Sir Walter Raleigh who found out about tobacco and took it back to England and introduced it there. But when, but when the mm -hmm. Europeans first saw them smoking, they thought they were on fire, you know, the Indians. Well, well, could be. Wouldn't you think so? 
Uh, Remember, well, I they didn't know. have. I, I uh, never thought much about it. They didn't have lighters. What did you? If you were an Indian, wanted to light a cigarette. What did you do? Stop and build a campfire by rubbing two sticks together? If I were together? in England and wanted to no, light a cigarette, Indian. I would resist it the same as I would here. I do not like cigarettes. You don't like I cigarettes. Like cigarettes. I know. No, but if you were an Indian, I didn't say in England, an Indian out on the range in the days before lighters and matches. I don't think Indians had matches. How did they light cigarettes? They went to the hot coals, I suppose. They didn't smoke cigarettes. They smoked a pipe. Oh, yeah. well, how'd they light a pipe? You have to light it With to smoke it. With a hot coal. They were men in those days, and they picked up a hot coal and put it... And carried it in a pocket? No. But I say, when you were riding, chasing buffalo or something, how did you have a cigarette? I don't want to well, you were out in Marlboro I I country. I'm not interested in cigarettes, <laughs> and uh, I am vastly interested in Indian, but not in cigarettes. So let's go on to something else. But no, I just wonder if the tobacco i'm not a smoker either i never have smoked so oh, this I is smoke not a pipe. but i wonder if if it isn't the treatment of the tobacco that perhaps is made for the noxious tars and stuff you know it's all doctored up sweetened up goodness knows what's done to it Molasses, to the crimped um put into papers and all um i, I just wonder if tobacco smoked in its native state would be as deleterious as it is supposed to be by all those who uh, who claim that it uh, does kill you dead or takes Listen, lops eight years off your age or something. Mm -hmm. All the philosophizing from you and me ah. in the world isn't going to help. He's going to smoke cigarettes. He doesn't want to live forever. You know my premise. I always say, what is it people want to die of? That's right. What's he die? Well, it dies of lung cancer. It's not going to be fun to die of anything. I don't think it's fun to die of old age. You yeah. don't. I, I never <laughs> have, have but I, I, but I don't. I, I, the people I've seen die of old age haven't seemed to me to be dying very happily. Uh -huh. Maybe it's a, a godsend to be carried off by some blight. Who knows? Who knows? How did we get into this? There's no movie? easy <laughs> way. No, I'm, I'm all in favor of changing the subject myself. Uh, this is WOR, New York, 710 in your dial, your station for news, mm -hmm. as it happens. All right, yes. And uh, ask me pretty soon about portable billboards, because I have a story I'll ask you not to. Well. No, I want to do some commercials all right, now. Oh, don't do the commercials. Yes. I want to start with Royal Tone, the bonus, bonus photo people who have more than a thousand dealers that uh, are eager to take the films that you'll be taking over the 4th of July weekend, today and tomorrow and next day. All those color films, well, right away on Monday <coughs> morning are the first chance you get. Take your film to a Royal Tone bonus photo dealer because not only will you get jumbo color prints beautifully done but each one will have as a free bonus a wallet size color print for you to carry around or send to relatives how do you find out where your royal tone bonus photo dealers are all thousand of them well i'll give you a phone number you can call or if you just remember all the goldsmith stationery stores are royal tone bonus photo dealers and so are all the snapshot stores but if you want still an another name call 732-6030 and they'll tell you 732-6030 that's a new york city manhattan tie line over to their jersey city plant in Dur jersey the phone number in the area code 201 is 432-4000 and we have news of a of a macy sale that um, is is going on that should uh, interest anyone who is interested in um, in values tomorrow Macy's is open. Come to Macy's sale of famous name swimsuit for girls. Uh, you can save 40% off the regular prices, and they just have thousands of these girls' swimsuits at Macy's. And many of them are famous name ones, big savings. Suits size 7 to 14, regularly 5 to $9, on sale just for $2.99 to $5.39. Size 4 to 6X, regularly $4.50 to $8, just uh, 6 Nine, just two sixty nine to four seventy nine at Macy's. Now these are one and two piece swimsuits and dazzling colors and darling styles. And at Macy's low prices, you can get the girls several suits. Now these are famous name swimsuits as low as two sixty nine, but not every suit is available in every color and size. So hurry to Macy's for first choice and biggest selections. And you can charge your new swimsuit to your Macy's account and save forty percent off regular prices. At this is tomorrow at the Macy's uh, nearest you. Louis Sherry Shimmer has only 
oh, a measly little 10 or 12 calories per serving, and that's because while sweet, it has no sugar in it. Uh, ordinary uh, gelatin desserts are loaded with sugar and therefore loaded with calories. Louis Sherry Shimmer has three new wild taste um, temptations. One's black cherry, another's black raspberry, and another is a combination of strawberry and banana. And if you want to be slimmer, buy Shimmer. It is made by Louis Sherry. Now, the Circle Line cruise around Manhattan. If there is one thing that you should do for visiting firemen, before you do any other sightseeing, for goodness sake, take all concern on a Circle Line trip around Manhattan. These boats leave from 6.30 in the morning till, oh, it's up till, no, from 9.30 in the morning up till 6 at night. And the, it's about a three hour cruise. You see the Statue of Liberty, you just see everything. You're up close enough to see the skyline to see Manhattan in a way you'd never see it under any other circumstances. The uh, breeze off the water is always cooling and the patter that goes along the explanations of the historic and interesting sights you're seeing is uh, it's almost uh, like a vaudeville show. It's that good and still informative. And the Circle Line uh, trips are uh, something you'll talk about for years and years. And if you have no visiting firemen or relatives to take on such a trip, why don't you go by your lonesome? You'll enjoy it. I love the one that comes, you know, about sunset time, the last one at night. Yes, ma'am. It is nice. Now then, do you want me to ask you about uh, portable billboards? A portable billboard, was that it? Yes, I was absolutely dumbfounded the other day in a little squib, I think it was Wall Street Journal, to find out that a portable billboard has been introduced in two towns, in Philadelphia and in Dallas. And that's something, you know, they've used this especially, especially designed for towns that have uh, ordinances against billboards. <laughs> well, I guess when they drew up the town ordinances, you know, no billboard stationary outdoor signs well you can't say a portable billboard that's being pulled along on a, on a truck is a stationary sign so billboards going along in traffic apparently are not illegal even well, in places all, all like the all the buses have advertisements on them inside yes, but of the, them. Uh, those are smaller signs not nearly as big as a billboard sign well, it must be, be dandy for traffic to but it just shows to what lengths one can go to, to get around any, any given situation. And there's a New Jersey concern that sells ad space on vending machines in schools and factories. And there is a new enterprising group that sells um, uh, a service where they'll go and tack up your message on the bulletin board at high schools. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? You they're, they're putting mm -hmm. advertisements on containers for milk and cream now, and orange yes. aid. Oh, yes. And all are. sorts of milk. Well, remember the, the beginnings of our famous newspaper in San Francisco, the San Francisco Chronicle, was when they, the two brothers who founded it, um, the De they first brothers, had a, the De Young brothers, they first had a deal with the laundry. Maybe they owned the laundry, and they put, they ran a gossip column on the board, the, the pasteboard that Cardboard, was in your yeah. shirt when it came back from the laundry. So when you took a shirt out of a drawer to put it on, you'd stop and read the gossip, uh, kind of scandalous gossip, on the, the pasteboard that was inside your shirt. And the whole San Francisco Chronicle, famous paper, grew out of, of that. Do it you know that successful. I was still alive, or rather I was a contemporary? What do you mean, you were still alive? <laughs> well, so he, he, he was still alive, if you <laughs> like it better. I remember, I mind very well the day he died in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, Which then he one was, of the De Young, you mean? He was 90, one of Mike De Young, yes. Mike De Young. And, mm -hmm. uh, he, he was horsewhipped publicly, or his brother, I don't know which one of them, by some clergyman for something that they printed in their, their little throwaway paper, you know. Yes, I remember hearing tell of that. But I've been interested, too, in all these advertisements that you suddenly see painted in uh, sometimes color on the sidewalks right here in New York. You know, the last one I've seen was... Well, this I happen to know is illegal. ...the green slime. Yes, this is illegal. Yeah, all of a sudden, all over the sidewalks here in Midtown, there were, were signs uh, uh, about that. Apparently, it's not enforced, but I know there's a, uh, it's on the books. It's, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, there, of course, I don't know that I've ever seen any that is uh, actually sponsored by a product, but... If you go out in the countryside, you'll see on some rocks and things in fields or on a rock-facing palisade, it'll say, Jesus saves, or some uh, biblical uh, 
Uh, yes, and you ought to see some of the writings on the, on the, the concrete in the park or in the early mm -hmm. morning before it's washed away. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Well, I was amused, though, up on Route 22, when we go to our log cabin in Kent, we travel on Route 22 as, <coughs> as far as Wingdale, and then we switch over to 55. But there was a, a sign, a wooden sign. I think it, several years ago, I think it used to advertise sweet corn, you know, growing beside the road and for sale. And lettered on there a few weeks ago in rough hand lettering, probably one with one of these felt point uh, pens, was, and I won't say what make of car it was, it says, don't buy such and such a car. You can't get parts for it when you need it. So I noticed that for four or five weeks, and now it's X'd out, and written over it says, okay to buy it, now you can get parts. <laughs> well, do you mind the time uh, uh, the Fraser Kaiser car came out? Mm -hmm. And some <coughs> gentleman was infuriated. He bought one. I think this happened in Bridgeport. He bought one, and he couldn't get any satisfaction from the dealer or from the manufacturer. And he had big lemons painted on the side on the doors of the car. Yes. And he drove all around and said, this car is a lemon. And that has been done again and again in many Do you remember when Tommy Manville, when he was alive, he, he bought a very fine Ryrie car, British car, and he, and the he ran the big Royce. page in the, in the New York Times. And he offered to sell them both for $1,000 a piece, about three days after he bought them. But I think he um, had some reservations about that, so he didn't actually have to go through and sell well, them. Well, Tommy, Tommy mm -hmm. was not that crazy, you know. He, he, uh -uh. he talked a, a but lot. But look, he'd bought, spend $7,000 to advertise in the New York Times that he'd sell these two cars for $1,000. Is that what a full page cost? Surely, a little more than that now. It seems to me the last ad that I bought for the New York Times, I think I paid $7,000 for, uh, I think, eight column, uh, for six columns. That would be two yeah, columns. Yeah, but this didn't come out of your hide. This came out of some organization's hide. How do you know? Huh? You know, her, her father always used to count her freckles when he wanted to make her mad. I have run some advertisements in the New York Times for the Vivisection Investigation League. I have run other advertisements in the New York Times for the Millennium Guild. And I have run other advertisements in the New York Times for which we paid. Her father. And you didn't count, even know it. Count her freckles. <laughs> and it used to make her very angry. So the other night, in a playful mood, and being familiar with this repartee between father and daughter, I said, I am going to count your freckles. Mm -hmm. And that got no rise out of it. And I said, why don't you get a piece of sandpaper and sandpaper these freckles off? And what did you say I thought was a very good line? What did I say? I don't know. Then I'd be rawhide. Oh, that's right. I did say I'd be rawhide. I raw. thought I nearly fell But you see, you spoiled the freckles. When my father used to count my freckles, he didn't say, I'm going to count your freckles. He used to go with his finger. He would, we'd be sitting perhaps at the table when my father would come home from one of his trips because he'd be gone so much of the time he'd come home I'd be I always made him a burnt sugar cake the first day he came home he loved that he'd be sitting at the table eating a burnt sugar cake piece and all of a sudden he'd take his fork and he'd look up and he'd say 16 17 18 210 211 and I knew he was counting my freckles and it did used to upset me, but now I don't mind freckles, except they look awful in candid photographs. There's no use minding them, you've got No them. use minding them, no, I've got well, freckles. You've got freckles, that's all Although that's I saw a pretty girl, about 18, in a hairdressing shop the other day, and she had had her hair straightened. Now, in a fine hairdressing shop, a hair straightening job costs about $50, especially if you have longish hair. In other words, this girl didn't want curly hair? Oh, none of the girls seem to want curly hair these days. They want it straightened. Exactly. Do you know what Captain Earl Young's daughter does to keep even a faint wave out of her hair? She wants it to be absolutely straight. She wraps it in strands around empty beer cans at night and sleeps that way so her hair will be absolute straight. Now, you see, if she put it around small rollers, it yeah. would be wavy. But to put it around empty beer cans... I'll bet you there's lots of empty beer cans, <laughs> in, their, uh, cans in their kitchen, too, if I know the young. <laughs> well, you can use an empty beer can over and over and over again. But 
this girl was so pretty, and I saw her, uh, and they, then she was having her hair done on big rollers the size of beer cans, right? And it was Amo Box over there, and Willie had done the straightening, and I said, Willie, how much does a hair straightening job cost? He said, $50. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know hair straightening cost that much. So well, is it true? I heard him say that these girls iron their hair or cause their hair to oh. iron with a hot iron. Is uh, this a fact or somebody putting... Earl Young's daughter irons her hair too after uh, during the day to keep it straight if it shows any signs of buckling up into the faintest wave and all these girls that have this straight straight long hair they iron it mm -hmm. to keep it straight but i'm trying to make a point on this this girl was so pretty and willie said well i know how her hair is straight all right because i straightened it you know for fifty dollars yeah. but he said, what I can understand, he said, since she was in here about six months ago, she hasn't got any freckles anymore. And then I, I had to go into the dryer myself just then, and I never got to ask him, did you find out how she got rid of the freckles? Well, who, I wouldn't want you without freckles. Maybe she just had a new kind of makeup. Uh, well, I'm not even interested now in getting rid of them, except, I say, in candid photographs. Freckles well, do nice. loom they up look terribly. Fun, but, uh, I like them on you. Uh, however. I uh, like them on most kids, too. Um, in that um, Mrs. Gallagher's article on Jacqueline Kennedy, wow. you know, she even tells you that Jacqueline Kennedy has her hair straightened. Well, this we didn't know <laughs> up until now. <laughs> I thought maybe she just had a <gasps> Jacqueline Onassis, you meant, was that? Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought perhaps now she had a magic wand and just waved the wand, you know? Well, maybe now, but when she was in the White House, she had it straightened. Solid gold drachmas yeah. this wand would be made of. Had it straightened. And you know, our, in this house, when we came in here, this house is perfect to live in. You mean the apartment Everything here in the Everything about this apartment is wonderful. The way the building is kept up, the way we are treated, the heat in the winter, the, the cool in the summer, everything. But I thought with Central Park we'd get wonderful radio reception, television reception. And I'm not much of a television man. And they put this cable in here, and I want to tell you I discovered Laugh-In and Mission Impossible. Well, from getting no television reception, when we had the Comtel table, we got one a cable, we had wonderful reception. Yeah. Now the Comtel table is taken out. And the and Comtel we, people tell one story, and the building management tell another. In the meantime, none of us can watch television. And we can't here, get it. here was Prince Charles of England, was Bar Mitzvah in Wales the other day. And I'm home here. I can't see a thing. And you, a staunch Irishman. And here, well, that's but all But you right. served in the British... Um, well, laughs, I like to watch. The no, I don't. Zone. No, I'm going to keep it on a kinder keel. On a kinder keel. I mean, it's all right for you. I'll to go and take one of my pleasant pills. I, I nearly yeah, took a nasty don't one say today. For laughs. I <laughs> think that, that the prince conducted himself yes. very well. If you and have to have a prince, better it be he. And the queen yes. and the queen mother behaved themselves well. And I, for one, like their hats. So the only women I know who wear hats, and I wish all women would wear hats, and all men would wear hats. What are the hat makers in the middle of the world one, going then? to do? Why don't you wear a hat then? Because they haven't got one. You have to pay 40 bucks for a hat. Right? You've got one that you're giving to Bart. It doesn't fit me. Well, that's where you wear such a big size. Yes, they I hardly do. Make I have a seven and head, seven eighths hat. <laughs> Let's hear you do. Uh, I have some mm -hmm. friends listening mm -hmm. in. Would you please show them how well you do commercials? Yes, oh. I will say that House of Chance at 70 at 50. The Second Street and Seventh Avenue has one of the finest locations and one of the finest Chinese restaurants in all New York. They've been there thirty some years, and do you know that they have chefs that specialize in nearly every one of the major dishes on the menu? And each one of those chefs would have your heart if you tried to tamper with his recipe. No, and he has domain. One man does wash you up, and that's all. And another man does Mandarin duck. And each are specialists. You will like this Chinese restaurant, House of Chan. Been there a long time. Su Chan, uh, the, the proprietor's um, uh, son, is learning the business. He's behind the bar now. And um, the menu is imaginative and is translated so you know what you're getting in these various lovely Chinese dishes. And there's a miniature menu as a souvenir that you may have. If you want us to have one sent to you, we will do so if you just write and tell us that you... Um, uh, tell us that you want one. Uh, Macy's is having a sale on Broadloom. Now, it's, you can save 27% off regular prices at Macy's closeout of thick, beautiful, textured Broadloom. 
acrylic pile, luxury broadloom on sale now at Macy's in 12 solids and tweeds, regularly $10.99 a square yard, now on sale at $7.99 a square yard. And that low price includes complete custom installation over thick sponge rubber padding. Now this acrylic pile broadloom is so hard wearing and easy to care for, it's perfect for every room in your home, including the game room, nursery, and den. Choose your textured broadloom from decorator shades of antique bronze to delft blue. And um, the color, it'll stay nice for years and years, adding charm and beauty to your place. And it's on sale at Macy's for $7.99 a square yard, completely installed. On that, you're saving 27% off regular prices. This sale is going on now at the Macy's nearest you. And let's hear a message on a movie, The Pride of Miss Jean, Prime of Miss Jean Brody. to the praises, a magnificent achievement, says Rex Reed. The acting is sheer perfection, Maggie Smith's performance is brilliant, a sheer joy to behold, raves Bob Salmaggy. Four stars, highest rating, votes the Daily News. Superlative, Jean Brody comes to radiant life, says Judith Christ in New York Magazine. And extraordinary, simply great, well that's according to Vincent Canby of the New York Times. And now Miss Jean Brody comes to a specially selected theater near you, the prime of Miss Jean Brody in color from 20th Century Fox, rated M. Cop beverages, we all like to hear about them. You could get a PhD in mixing summer drinks with class. Mix the best ingredients together in a glass But why go through the trouble when you've already got Perfection in the summer mixers bottled by Cot It's Cot to be good, you'll always make them tangy, make them tart Be an expert in the gentle art of mixing perfect summer drinks with Cot Cot half and half or quinine or bitter lemon sparkles up a drink with flavor other mixers haven't got. The gentle art of mixing summer drinks is a breeze when you know it's cot to be cool in the summertime. It's cot to be cool in the summertime. Eddie, did you see a uh, cartoon, I think it was in the New Yorker magazine, of a picket line, so well behaved, so prim, almost as if every marcher was a Mr. or Mrs. Cal uh, Casper Milk Toast. And then, this is in page 27 of the current New Yorker, did you read what the picket sign said? Yep. And who was picketing? Yep. It was, we were promised the earth, please, may we have it soon? And one lady demure has a sign around her neck saying, please support the meek. You know, the meek shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall mm -hmm. inherit the earth, said the good book. And another one said, murmur for peace. And another picket sign says, nothing personal. And another big one says, discriminating against us is wrong, but that's only our opinion, of course. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and another one says, a modest slice of the pie for the sky. And another one, pardon us. And another one says, we don't mean to be pushy. No offense, man. Sorry. Self-effacing citizens demand a tiny voice. I think it is just the most priceless thing that ever was. But you're the reader of the comic strips in the daily papers. I only read Little Abner, and I don't get a chance to read the others. And didn't you tell me that it was... Dick Tracy and the one that Alfred Andreola does well, sir, I don't are both uh, doing ones about dog napping? I do not see how these got through, although I approve of them enormously, but two of them in one paper at one time. Dick Tracy started about a month ago, and a uh, crook got a hold of this little boy who could draw beautifully, and the crook gave him $100 a week. Oh, he thought this was an enormous sum of money. And his duty, they would go out and kidnap dogs. This is the storyline of, of Dick Tracy at the moment. And then this kid would draw a picture 
of the dog, and the crooks would get a thousand dollars or uh, five hundred dollars. This would be a dog they'd already dog napped. If they already had it. And they'd make the sketch, and and. And the woman would see the sketch, and she say, "Yes, that's my Toto, please." And and uh, they'd say, "Well, for a thousand dollars, we can get him for you." Well, that's been running for some time now, and Dick Tracy. And then suddenly, uh, my old friend Alfred Andreola, who I think runs Kerry Drake. And by golly, the storyline there is beginning to be on dog thieves. Well, there I'm not surprised because there, the dog napping, the dog thievery that's going on now is beyond belief. Now, Steve White down at NBC, I've known him for years and years. He, he's working now, I think he's the executive head of Monitor or, you know, one of them. He called up with tears in his voice the other day, the family poodle was stolen. I said, stolen from where? He said, we left it in the car. And I said, well, Steve, what kind of an idiot are you to leave a dog in a car? He said, well, the door was locked. But he said, of course, we had to leave the glass down from the top a little ways for air. And I said, but don't you know that even if the door is locked, these car thieves have ways of getting in. You can't leave a, a dog there because in the first place, if it's a fine dog, they can steal it and get ransom or... Uh, reward money and if they can't do that they sell it for a good sum to laboratories i said shame on you i'm ashamed of you i gave him such a scolding for leaving a dog unattended in a car people do also tie their dogs outside of supermarkets and of course they're stolen it's an open invitation to steal a dog when worse than that some of the bolder dog thieves are just going right if they see a child walking a dog especially and just go take it away from him leash well, dog child. and all we know a and, case of uh, woman right in this neighborhood uh, well in this building edna oh, donnell her dog was uh, walking her pekingese and they snatched the pekingese right out of her her uh, she was walking it they snatched the leash and peek and all and uh, she got hers back because she had got a description got a policeman right away and played, chased them right up through central park but her she was the the lucky one the dog napery, and then the sad part is, of course, you feel sorry for the owners bereft of their family pets. But if you ever see what goes on at one of these dog auctions in, for the ones who are not returned for ransom, crammed into trucks, not watered, not fed, sold for, well, sometimes 10 cents a pound and all. That means for a 60 pound dog you get six dollars sometimes it's even more than 10 cents a pound if a laboratory is especially interested in getting its hands on uh, new dogs to experiment on and it is it is just the saddest thing in the world in connection with the vivisection investigation league we've recently run advertisements in the times and the news and the christian science monitor and I'm going to run those advertisements again. The ad is titled 10 cents a pound. I have some copies of the ads if you didn't see it, which kind of gives the, the story of the, the dog napping. But if you have a dog, and if you don't try to take uh, measures to see to it that he isn't stolen, then you're not being a very good friend, a man's best friend. That's all I can say. I have some more commercial messages here. Let's start. Oh, well, the Kalo's coming up. Liver is kind of a classic with cats. So, Kalo mixed healthful beef liver with a few other old favorites, like delicious chicken and fresh ocean fish. Kalo liver and chicken and Kalo liver and fish are two popular meat varieties that'll have your cat dancing for her dinner. The thing that makes Kalo such a groove for cats is that we've got variety that just won't quit. Kalo liver and chicken and Kalo liver and fish are just two of the nine delicious kinds of Kalo cat food. So next time you consider buying cat food, consider buying Kalo, the cat food that's made by Borden. And if it's from Borden, it's got to be good. The Cinerama Releasing Corporation have asked me to tell you that 
for 4th of July fireworks, Krakatoa east of Java is the biggest uh, show to date. The New York Post said that, I'm quoting. Krakatoa east of Java in Super Cinerama, the motion picture for everyone, now at the Cinerama Theater. It's Broadway and 47th Street. And then for your holiday entertainment, that be sheer delight, don't miss Ring of Bright Water. That's the one with Bill Travers and his wife and the pet otter. The New York Times calls it the most endearing and captivating family film of the year. And Ring of Bright Water is now at the 68th Street Playhouse on 3rd Avenue. And uh, a message from NoCal. <laughs> Here come the savers from NoCal. 12 great soda flavors, 12 great calorie savers. The savers from NoCal. A coffee, a cola, three mixers, five fruits. The savers from NoCal. Cola, coffee, quinine, cream, root beer, ginger, orange, grape, citrus, lemon, club, black cherry. The bouncy, bubbly, no-cal savers. We lost the calories, we saved the flavors. Available in no-deposit twist-off half-quart bottles. Remember NoCal's complete line of delicious sodas. Each flavor is a calorie saver. Be a loser and love it with the savers from NoCal. And we have a message from Compose. That's great, Eddie. That guy <laughs> says we ran into a tiger. It's great. Where do you hear him? Oh, my brother-in-law knows more clean stories. You know how Listen, it is. Eddie, those reports you did were just fine. I know we put a lot of stress on you these last few weeks. Night work. Well, I just want you to know you can count on that bonus we talked about. Hey, that's great. Something happened to you, Eddie. Sometimes the least little tension would set you off. This time, you... Well, what happened to me, Pete, is Compose. A simple pill called Compose, and I'm a new man. He can work relaxed, relax to sleep. With Compose, largest selling sedative for temporary relief of simple nervous tension, without a prescription. When you're under stress, when you've got to relax, take Compose. C-O-M-P-O-Z. Compose. Just 98 cents. In honor of 4 of July, 1776 anniversary, at 2 o'clock today, if you have a bell, ring it. Up in Kent, Connecticut, there's to be the ringing of the bell in the Belfry Tower of the uh, uh, Eric Sloan Museum in our new historic park the site of the former town dump. Bart Seeger will ring the bell at 2 o'clock. But everyone all over this nation is urged to ring bells, big or small bells, at that hour. And um, what was it? They're being very stubborn. They have not entered very gracefully into this. And the military say they've done it for hundreds of years at noon. So they're going to ring the bells on all Well, noon. but the rest of us, yeah. civilians, well, we're, ring uh, our bells at 2 o'clock. On our way to the country, and... Uh, Please stay tuned to Lyle Venn on the news. He, in turn, will be succeeded by Arlene Francis, and then comes Jack O'Brien. As for us, please be so very kindly as for to remember who loves us. No we, kidding. We, we do. do. Ain't it the truth? Yes, it is. Skip the gutter now, and a happy, you know. <laughs> <laughs>